Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to convert this 1969 Hot Wheels Charger into a vehicle for the tabletop game Gaslands. To make this conversion easier, I want to take the whole car apart. I'm doing this by drilling out the rivets on the bottom of the car. Once this is done, everything should just separate nice and easy. I want to scuff up the surface, so for that I'm using 320 grit sandpaper and then removing any of the debris left by the sandpaper with some methyl hydrate. Now that the surface is all scuffed and clean, we can start sticking on some of the weapons. I modeled all these using Fusion 360 and then printed them on a frozen Sonic Mini. And to fix these to the body, I'm just using some CA glue and activator. To stick with the post-apocalyptic theme of Gaslands, I'm replacing the front and back windshield with some grating. To achieve this look at this scale, I'm using window screens, the same type you would have in the windows of your house. You can pick up a pretty large roll of this stuff at places like Home Depot or Amazon, and it's relatively cheap. And once cut to size, I'll use a little bit of CA glue and activator to hold it into place. We also have some forward facing machine guns I modeled and printed for the vehicle because why wouldn't I? And they're once more attached with some CA glue and activator. We're next going to lay down some primer. For this I'm using AK Rust. The reason I chose this as our primer coat is that I want the final appearance to look like there's rust showing through the paint of the car. So aside from helping with the paint adhesion, this will also give us a good jumping off point for the rust effect. Once the primer is dry and we've attached our car to a better base for painting, we're going to start building up the rust texture. For this I'm only using two additional colors, a darker brown and an orange oxide. I'm starting by taking one of my more well used brushes and with the darker brown I'm stippling it all over the surface of the car. Similar to dry brushing, I'm going in with a minimal amount of paint and slowly building up the two tone rust texture. I'm also trying to be as random and as uneven as I can having some areas with more and less paint to better sell the overall rust look. Once that's dry, I'm taking the orange oxide and reducing it about five to one with some water. I'm then taking that heavily reduced mix, adding it to my airbrush, and then saturating the surface of the car. This is both going to act as a filter for the rust effect, as well as going to seep into the low-lying areas, adding some of that orange oxide color. Continuing with the orange oxide, I'm now reducing it about two to one with some water and going back to our well-used brush, I'm going to start stippling it onto the body of the car. Only this time I'm going to be a bit more selective in my placement, focusing more around the wheel wells of the vehicle, a few parts of the hood, and a little bit around the roof. And like always, I'm going in with a minimal amount of paint and slowly building up the effect until I'm happy with it. And finally, I'm taking the orange oxide one more time, reducing it about one to one with some water. And once again with a stippling technique, just boosting that orange oxide in a few key areas. To make sure our rush shows through the top coat of paint, I want to add a masking layer. For this, you could use things like a commercial masking fluid or liquid latex, or in this case, toothpaste. It's water soluble, you probably have some, and it's very cheap. So all I'm doing is picking out the spots that I want to add the masking to, putting a little bit of the toothpaste on the tip of an X-Acto blade, and then applying it to the areas that I want the rust to show through in the end. 
Once we finish the masking layer, we're ready to lay down our main color. For this, I've chosen a blue. In this case, I'm using a mix of expired blue and code blue from one of my favorite lines of paint being the Tim Gore Bloodline by Createx. And I've also reduced this about 10% with some paint reducer to help the paint flow a bit easier through the airbrush. I'm next taking the darker of the two blues, in this case the code blue, and I'm just picking out a few spots on the car and rather sparingly adding a little bit of the darker blue to those areas. The reason I'm doing this is it helps to break up the base layer of the blue, and this will help us better sell the beat up and weathered effect on the car. And we can maybe assume there's been some replacement parts on this car in the world of Gaslands. So to show some of that and make the paint job a bit more interesting, I'm painting the driver's side door in a crimson red. Once we've given the paint a good amount of time to dry, we can start removing our masking layer to reveal the rust beneath. And for this, I'm just using a Q-tip and some water. While doing this, I'm working slowly and being as mindful as I can, as I only want to remove the masking layer and none of the other paint. And so far, this is how we're looking. Since all the window grating was painted blue when the body of the car was painted, I'm just going to quickly paint it over with a generic silver paint, and the forward facing guns are going to be hit with a gunmetal. I'm also going to start adding some pin washes to the panel lines and recesses on the car. For this I'm using a combination of a dark brown and an orange oxide and I'm applying them wet on wet with one another. What this does is when they dry it gives a realistic rust effect in the panel lines. This is going to add a little bit more dimension rather than just doing a standard black pin wash. I painted the back rocket launchers an off-white and a tan and I really didn't like how it looked. So we're going to skip over all of that and return to it later. I dry brushed the forward facing guns with some silver and then made a purple and blue glaze to give a subtle metal burn effect to the fronts of the barrels. Once they were dry, I gave them a wash made out of sienna and I used that same wash on the grating as well as a few select spots on the vehicle itself to help add a water stained effect. I 3D printed some custom wheels for the car to give it a bit more detail and an overall more aggressive look. I primed them with black AK primer and then top coated it with a 60% gray. The hubcaps were painted silver and then I gave those and the rest of the wheels a black wash using a one to one mix of black ink and water. From there I gave the hubcaps a rusty look by using both a dark brown and orange oxide wash. The wheels were glued on to the base of the vehicle using the original axles and a little bit of CA glue and some activator. As I mentioned earlier, the color of the rocket launchers in the back of the vehicle I wasn't happy with. So I decided to repaint them in a two-tone of tan and olive green mixed together at about a ratio of one to one, and then the remaining parts being painted in an olive green. After which they were given a quick black dry brush at the front of the rocket launcher to help give a little bit of a soot effect and a light wash of sepia and orange oxide. From here the whole vehicle is going to be reassembled minus the original windshield and yes to do this I'll be using some CA glue and activator. Since the front and rear grille and bumpers are chrome, I want to tone those down so they match with the overall look of the car. So I'm just going in with some thinned down sepia and orange oxide and slowly building up a rust effect. And like all the rust on this car, I'm trying to be as random as I can. To finish off the paint job, I'm going to add some dry pigment powder. This is going to help add to the rust effect as well it's going to help add a little bit of a dust effect as well. I'm locking the dry pigment in with a light coat of Createx matte varnish. Top coating the dry pigments with a matte varnish is going to knock down their overall intensity. So in areas where I want the dry pigments to have a greater effect, I'm just adding a second and third coat and then locking them in once more with a light coat of matte varnish.
And there we have it, our customized vehicle for Gaslands. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be doing some more of these Gasland customizations in the future, some more sponsor specific. Anyways, if you've made it this far and you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll consider subscribing and leaving a like. And if you want to help support the channel in any way, there are some links in the description below. That all being said, I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.